senior at St. Michael's College uh, here in Vermont, and uh, I, there's snow, snow starting to melt, really starting to turn out to be spring, and uh, <laughs> sort of like you're out in Washington, so you know about the snow, I'd imagine. Uh, we don't get that much snow, uh, quite a bit of rain, but it's been sunny as of late, unseasonably. Okay. Okay. Well, so. <laughs> well, hey, that works. So I'm a senior in college and I'm in this class. It's reporting for media. And sure. our final project is uh, writing a uh, feature article on sort of any topic. And I, I, I think probably, as you know, a lot of sort of new traffic to the flat earth movement uh, is uh, sort of stems from that Netflix documentary that it does. Uh, that is yeah, true. And, and so I, I'm one of those people, I became interested in it after uh, watching that, and I thought, man, it'd be a super interesting article to write. Sure. Uh, just see um, where folks who are prominent members or just your average member of the Flat Earth community, where they come from, yeah. what that sort of lead up has been. And frankly, like there's not a lot of media coverage on just that aspect of it, just because these sort of movements, it, it's a new thing in society, if that right, right, so right, right. Perfect. Well, so Mark, I, I like my just first question. So I, uh, I am recording this, if that's okay. Just yeah, so I yeah, have, yeah, you bet. Perfect. Um, so just my first question, what's your office like? Like, where do you do most of your work? And what does that sort of include for you? This office where you're you're basically looking at it, I'm basically, I'm nailed to it most of the time. Uh, big desk, uh, big tower computer. I'm old school because I'm older. So I grew up with towers. Laptops didn't do anything for me. I will never do work on a phone. I know there are, there are kids out there that live and breathe and do podcasts completely from their whatever phone they're using. Uh, decent sound system that goes with it and, you know, just memorabilia lying about. Nothing nothing really special. Just comfortable okay. things. I like, I like surrounding myself with positive imagery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the banner behind me, that's not CGI. That's actually real thing that uh, real. my my friend over at DITRH recommended he goes you guys you, you got to use small letters and repeat it a lot like they do in the sports things what they do for sports advertising and you know when you're when you're interviewing basketball players and football players it's like okay sure yeah, that's, hey, what, that's well, what we'll do that works it it creates a cool sort of vibe um mm. and so like I, I my so just sort of getting into it yeah. as someone who's an outsider um how would you classify the flat earth movement? I, I'd hesitate to use conspiracy theory, but I, what sort of nomenclature would you use around just classification? It's it, It's got to be in there with conspiracy theories because there is a conspiracy around it, uh, but it's mm -hmm. different from most conspiracies for several reasons. One, because it's so big. It's, it's so huge that a lot of people just can't get their heads around it. Uh, in fact, most of the denial that we see in Flat Earth, because everybody goes into it hating it, including me. I mean, everybody goes into it going, there's no way anyone could keep something this big a secret. You'd have to have millions and millions of people involved in them going, no, 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 it's different. It's so big that almost no one needs to know because it, it's compartmentalized and uh but i'm sorry so yes it is a conspiracy theory okay. but it is it is pro it, but it's definitely the biggest of them all and the other thing that makes it different from co other conspiracies is is that it's positive in mm -hmm. a way it's not this dark sinister thing where you're automatically going oh don't trust the government and uh everybody likes their cons the conspiracy world used to be kind of like uh batman with heath ledger you know, mm -hmm. with with the Joker, everyone wants it dark and dirty and and in low tones of gray and black. And yeah. with with flat Earth, it's different. There's a huge message of hope. There's more women in the flat Earth than there is about just any other conspiracy. And there's music written about it. Happy songs. I mean, I've got a there's a playlist on my channel that's got to be almost 300 tracks long now. Find me a happy song, a happy folk song about JFK or 9/11 yeah. or Pearl Harbor or any of those others. So, yeah. but yeah, it's a it's a big conspiracy, and it is, uh, for lack of a better word, it's it's kind of got a pseudo religious quality to it though, mm -hmm. as well, because it's got this message of hope, even though we don't have a Bible or robes, we don't chant. So as far as I know, uh, but it's, but it's, yeah, it's super positive and it, but in the documentary and I had to get this across in the documentary. Sorry, I ramble, um, no. was that there was a, uh, there was a scene in there where I mentioned an older movie, life of Brian by Monty Python. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, yeah. And has some of those aspects to it. People get so enthusiastic about Flat Earth that they they dig in their heels and they they preach what they and I use those sort of that sort of verbiage, uh, you know, preach leaps of faith, the gospel. And uh, so, yeah, it does have a religious aspect to it. Definitely. OK, yeah. Well, so thanks for helping clear that up. And so um, you, so you sort of said it in the beginning, you find that or do you find that you spend most of your time sort of doing flat earth related stuff uh, in your office there? Oh, that's this is all I do. I okay. mean, in fact, when I'm in fact, I, I'm really bad when it comes to this, because not only am I doing flat earth all the time between all the messages that come in from Skype and email and my phone down there, which just rings uh, and uh, even when I'm like what like a, like when I'm producing videos when I'm rendering them when I'm compiling them on this machine I will jump into a game Warcraft and my yeah. my guild name is called flat earth and so <laughs> I'm even advertising while I'm waiting for thi other things to finish and uh, Yeah, when I'm not doing interviews when I'm not doing videos. I'm looking at content all the time I'm I'm you know, just going to YouTube type in flat earth set the filter to one day and see what's happening. I go into Google, I type in flat earth and I set the filter to one 24 hours and see what's come through. And which, you know, yesterday was April fools, which meant that's probably our worst day because there's oh, right. lots of people that will come out and, and put out flat earth stories, even though they're not serious, but they do gain traction, which is nice. I mean, mm -hmm. like the, um, I know you're probably not old enough to remember uh, Daft Punk. The, uh, the... Oh, well, they, they released a newer album a few years ago that I'm a big fan oh, of. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, they were, they've been around since the 90s, and they released a story yesterday saying that they were going to remove Around the World from their catalog because they're now Flat Earthers. And really? it's like, oh, okay, that's very clever uh, how you did that. But again, it was, hey, you know what? I'll take that story. Why not? Yeah. Anyway, sorry, it, go it ahead. No, well, so you, so you spend a lot of time doing the Flat Earth yep. uh, stuff. What kind of, or for you, is there a work-life balance between it, or is Flat Earth an all-consuming entity? For me, I'm, again, different from most Flat Earthers. There's a lot of Flat Earthers that have day jobs and, and have family and have kids and stuff like that. And when I got into this, when I was out in Boulder, Colorado, uh, I had been teaching proprietary software for 20 years. And just happened to catch me in a lull period between startup companies and when I got into this, it really took off faster than I even thought. And it was a grassroots thing in 2015. And when I, I remember talking to a producer from True, True Television out in New York at the end of 2015, she was doing screen tests. And she told me, she goes, look, you just so you know, don't make any permanent life plans because this thing's going to take you in all sorts of different directions, regardless what happens with us. And so, yeah, I mean, it, for me, it was like a like an amusement park uh, or like a roller coaster car that just came into my living room, grabbed me and just took me. And so where I, I fought it at first, but now I don't anymore. Now it's like, OK, I just I, I say yes to basically everything. It's like, OK, you want me to go out to here, this location or this location? Sure. You want me to interview? You want to talk to these people? Sure. I trust in the world at this point. I, I trust in the system. So yeah, this is all, there is no work-life balance for me um, yeah, yeah. because a short version is I never got married, never had kids. I never even got close to being married, which was weird. The opportunity just never presented itself. And um, my career path was in sort of a limbo. I was in the perfect place when it hit me. And on top of that, um, what I try to tell people, I go, look, if I ever live long enough to write an autobiography, it's going to be called unsolicited because everything came at me. I didn't even have to pick up the phone. So uh, Google contacted me directly. They said, you know what? You might want to monetize your channel because you're, you're getting a lot of stuff. It's like, OK, uh, a publisher out of London called me and says, hey, we'd like to tear your clues into a book. I go, OK. Uh, radio show group out of um, Spokane, Washington con contacted me said, hey, how about a radio show? It's like, okay, why not? Uh, and then, uh, so it, pay it pay pays the bills, it keeps the lights on, uh, and then whatever comes after this, hey, great. Uh, producers have been swimming around for a couple of years now. Whoever, I, at this point, someone's going to pull the trigger because there's just too many numbers. Uh, they're, they, it's not that they're believers, producers believe in money. And they've been talking to people for a while. So it's just a question of, you know, who who actually gets it out there first. And I still think it'd be a, a fantastic television show because it's so polarizing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, like, 
you sort of talked about how you got into the movement. Right. If we can just jump back. Sure. I, would you give that sort of biographical sure. sort of lead up to joining the Flat Earth Movement and then your sort of rise to be, I'd say, one of the more preeminent members uh, sure. of the community? Uh, so in 2014, I was just kind of minding my own business, mm -hmm. staying out of the world's way. I had almost no Internet footprint whatsoever. I was being really, really quiet. I mean, I didn't have I still don't I don't, no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram, nothing. I was not I was nowhere to be found out there. And. I had looked because I was I was older. I had looked if if you're older and in the tech world, you know a lot about the internet origins and all the stories that have come through. I mean, way before YouTube and way before Vine and everything else. I mean, you were I was there when the internet forums first came out. Uh, back heck, I was an AOL forum consultant way back in the day when AOL used to be a thing. Uh, back with CompuServe and Prodigy and oh god, it's unbelievable. And if and I spent a lot of time, you know, looking at things in the internet that were conspiracy based, even before YouTube, you know, you, you, you saw stuff that came down the pipe and I grew up in a very sheltered environment beforehand. I grew up on a rural Island up in the Northwest of Washington, uh, just the Northwest corner of the United States. And I honestly didn't even believe that people in power lied about anything. I didn't think there were conspiracies up until I saw, uh, Oliver Stone's JFK in the theater in, in the early nineties. And then it came out. I remember the whole, I mean, I saw it opening weekend and the, it was packed house. And I remember everyone came out of there feeling angry. It's like, you know, cause it was done very, very well. I mean, I would call it his, his big opus. Uh, and after that, I dug into it about every conspiracy you could think of. And I had an opinion. I still do just about every conspiracy you can think of. Some I like, some I hate. And in 2014, I thought I'd seen it all. And everybody knows everybody who's on the internet. I don't care if you're on the internet or not. I mean, everybody is now. Everybody knows what flat earth is. Everybody hates it. It's like the, the, the ugly stepchild of, of the conspiracy world. It's like, Oh, that thing, because it's so obvious, right? It's like, it's the one it, it's like, I don't believe that, uh, Elvis uh, had Bigfoot's baby and I don't believe in flat earth. Right. And I looked at this thing and I, and eventually I said, you know, it's on my bucket list. I'm getting older. I was like, if, if I was in like, what was like 46 at the time? 40, yeah, 46, 45, I think. And I said, you know what? I'm going to debunk this thing in a weekend just so I can say that I did it. Last book on the shelf. I'm just going to look at it. Shut this thing down in a weekend. And then nine months later, I'm sitting there in February 2015 going, I can't. I mean, I'm, I consider myself a very clever problem solver. And I thought, OK, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. What do I do? So I got up, I mean, you watched the documentary. I got up in the middle of the night, literally, and, and said, okay, I literally had that Jerry Maguire moment, if you remember the movie, where he gets up and has yeah. this epiphany. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm going the other way with this. I'm going to say it's flat, and I will have the internet solve this for me. And so I made a series of videos. I made the first one, Flat Earth Clues Introduction, put it out there, and then made a few more. I did one every day, and it felt good. I, I'd never done any video editing, never done any narrative, narrative, didn't do anything like that. Put it out on the internet and just held my breath and waited for the other shoe to drop and said, okay, the, the, I'm waiting for some academic, and put my phone number out there, my, my address, my full name, my social security number, my bank records, all this stuff, and said, okay, come at me. And they didn't. As a matter of fact, other people started contacting me. Uh, people like you, uh, people wanted to, wanted to talk about it, interviews. Uh, people, just the, the the garden variety person on the street calling us like, man, this is really interesting. Yeah. And then I started having subject matter experts call me up, which they didn't even talk about in the documentary, which were military personnel, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, uh, engineers, pilots. Uh, experts in just about everything you could think of from uh, flight to transportation to uh, engineering when it comes to like a vacuum, the power of a vacuum. And they all kept saying the same thing. It's like, you know what? You may be on to something. Completely called me. People just called me out of the blue. Said, yeah. And I was like going, okay, so now this thing really has gone off the rails because not only am I, have I not been proven wrong, but now I'm getting reinforcement that it's actually correct. And people are going out and doing their own, their own experiments on a regular basis. And that's how things started to rise. I was just happened. It wasn't like I didn't invent flat earth, 
but I created, and I don't like using this term because it sounds redundant, uh, the dummy's guide to Flat Earth. I, I created Flat Earth 101 because everybody mm -hmm. else that had put stuff out be beforehand, it was more advanced. And the average person on the street, they're not very uh, scientific scientifically literate. They don't know. And I knew this almost immediately because of the curvature of the Earth formula, which they didn't talk about in, in the in the documentary, which is, seriously, you could walk up to anyone, maybe, maybe even in university. You say, okay, the curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile, and people are going, I'm totally with you. And I go, squared. They flip out. They just glaze over, and they for you can see their their eyes. They're they they're trying to remember everything it from junior high algebra, and they can't. It's like oh man, I wish I studied more. And if you don't know that, you're definitely not going to know anything else. People, I mean, science comes at us with with uh, geometry and trig and calculus and quantum mechanics. Like, are you kidding me? You you might as well be you know just playing a recording of a modem handshake. You know, that's that's all you should be playing to these people because they're not they have no idea what you're saying right now. Um, anyway, uh, be, and I so I, I just kept making videos after that and reporting on it. And once it came to the media, I was reporting more on, on what was happening in mainstream media and people were referencing the clues a lot. So that's how I kind of rose up in the ranks because I was there first mm -hmm. compared to a lot of people. Yes, there were other people, obviously, Matt Boylan, who was in the documentary. Uh, and and some others, uh, but if you're there, it uh, the the flat Earth community is based off of two things: how long you've been in it, and what sort of content did you put out. So by by that, I mean we're we're definitely not like Occupy Wall Street, <laughs> where they say oh, it's a leaderless movement. It's like no, of course it's not. It, it's absolutely there are leaders in this movement. If there wasn't, we wouldn't have pe people speaking at conferences. Occupy Wall Street didn't have conferences. So how you move up in the ranks is you create content. You, you People did. I mean, and there's lots of people who have done it now. You, you make some YouTube videos or wherever you want to put it out. But I mean, come on, YouTube is the largest television network in the world. Um, and you put them out there and either they resonate or they don't. And if they resonate, you move up. Uh, if they don't resonate, you just stay where you are. And I've seen people, you know, they get, you know, 2,000 subs and they, they start changing their perspective, 10,000, 20,000. And then the next thing you know, they're in a conference. So that's how, and that was four years ago now. The clues are four years and a month, roughly, yeah. old now. Okay, well, so the, there's a given way to get up, and you sort of ridden that sort of roller coaster as it's gained more prominence. Right. Uh, would that be fair to say? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, and, and I stayed the course. That was the other thing. Some people, when they get really pumped up, they, 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 they burn out. And for me, because of the training I had in the software community, I did high level tech support for a long time. And so I knew how to kind of keep everything in moderation. And so I, you know, just tried to stay, stay the pace. And even if I had down days, I wouldn't be like, ah, oh, that's it. I, you know, shut down my channel and hide all my videos and, and stuff like, no, no, that was never going to happen. So, uh, you know, the, the slow turtle kind of paid off in this case. Yeah. And so you sort of mentioned going back uh, that JFK movie was this first sort of thing that uh, I'm going to say, like, opened you up to more conspiracy theories. Right, and that right, right, right. Stuff. Um, what, like, at right now, today, are there any conspiracy, other sort of conspiracy theories that you're... Uh, you buy into ones you don't like just get into that a little uh, bit. Oh sure. I mean, again, what I somebody asked me this recently and I thought it was a really good question and that is how does one become a conspiracy person? Official quote unquote conspiracy person. I said it's really not some it's not like you have to you, you may it's not a mail in form or something you can it's not a course you can take online. Although it's in some ways it is. Um but there's no certificate. Everybody's got a line for them that there's lies and then there's truth. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows this. Look, there's conspiracies in every aspect of our lives right now. I mean, I, take your pick. Business, politics, uh, entertainment, sports, uh, journalism, even science. There are conspiracies out there. I, I, I could ra rattle off for hours on any one of those topics. It's just a question of what you're willing to, not even the word accept, look at. There's, there, we all know there's blatant lies out there. We all know these, but there's other lies. It's like, yeah, I don't really want to look at that because it makes me feel uncomfortable. 
Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, his, one of his greatest lines was, only give the public as much truth as they can handle. Because people, people after a while, it, it's, it weighs on you. And so, segue into conspiracies now. Yes, I have a conspiracy on just about... I, I have a, an opinion on every conspiracy you can think of. You pick one, I've got, I've got some sort of take on it. Are there some that I like better than others? Yes. Uh, and, but is Elvis still alive? Probably not. Uh, do I think that 9-11 has, has some real problems? Yes, I do. Uh, but I look at problems, in fact, I look at conspiracies that most people don't even, are, don't even really think of as conspiracies. Forget about like the moon program. I'll look at Pearl Harbor, which is an old conspiracy, which is, look, if Pearl Harbor doesn't happen, we're all speaking German right now. And most of your history professors will tell you that. So the question is, wasn't it convenient <laughs> that Pearl Harbor happened? And, and it's like, it's too big. And so, uh, but they're like, here, I'll give you an I'll give you an example. I even came up with, I don't even talk about this one very often, but I'll tell it to you. Uh, I, I came up with a conspiracy that nobody talks about, for example, which would be the Panama Canal. And people okay. say, okay, boy, what's the Panama Canal? No big deal. I'm going, well, from an engineering standpoint, it's quite an achievement, right? Uh, you, we, we all know what, what the Panama Canal is, but uh, the biggest engineering achievement, oops, sorry, somebody's trying to call in, ignore, probably a solicitor, the, um, uh, the biggest en engineering uh, achievement up to that point, I think was the Grand Coulee Dam or the Hoover Dam, one of the two, let's say, let's say it's the Hoover Dam, uh, and during the construction of that, I think 70 people died, most of them leave from falling into piles of cement. Right, you're following up, even, and that was back in whatever the 30s or something like that. Yeah. So the question is, and and so then, I, and they say, okay, so what? I go, do you know how many people? And remember, the 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 Panama Canal is just digging a big ditch. You know, you weren't. It was all sea level, right? So do you know how many people died making the Panama Canal? Better part of six thousand. So, and, and then you're saying, oh, wow, that's really interesting. And I go, and, and you say, well, how'd they die? And I go, well, they died from malaria and yellow fever. And you're going, well, pff, come on, it's Panama, right? But that's fine. You know, that's, I'm going, no, 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 no. What if I told you that the American government knew f in advance that we were going to lose that many guys? It's like, no, they wouldn't send that many guys just down to die. I go, well, yeah, they would, because we didn't start the Panama Canal. Panama Canal was started by the French back in the late 1800s in fact they lost so many people they lost tens of thousands of people just they lost so many people that the the french uh the citizens uh, revolted and did huge protests like get our guys out of there right and they pulled them out of there so all the tools and everything the french are still down there it was partially actually completed when we went down there we had to invent mosquito netting and we had to invent different insect repellents and all this other stuff so as you're saying, okay, where's the conspiracy? The conspiracy is this. If remember the definition, if multiple people lie to accomplish a goal and hide it from the rest of the people, which is if the American government knew full well that they were going to lose at least, you know, 5,000. And I think they were fully prepared to lose 10,000 to accomplish this. Do you tell anybody? No, because that hurts the recruitment chances. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, you got a one in 50 chance of dying if you go down there. And that's, those aren't great odds. Right? And dying, for, and dying for something you can't stop. You know, bugs going to bite you. You're going to go to the hospital, Ben. You're going to die. So, look, conspiracies happen. They're out there. Uh, and some are more sinister than others. But w what makes my take on conspiracies different from most people is that I try to put myself in the other, sh other people's shoes. Meaning the conspiracy is being done for a reason. Right? And that is, okay, what was the reason you lied? You know, I don't care. Business, politics, sports. There's a reason you lied. Did the ends justify the means? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, some, sometimes there are decisions that the government has to make. And look, I'm not being pro-government when I say this. They make decisions on your behalf because they know that trying to get into debate over something like this is not going to help. It is, it's never going to go anywhere. And eventually somebody's going to say, well, you know what? We're making the choice for you. That's why you elected us. That's why we're going to do this. So uh, conspiracies are, are a little different for me because I believe in the greater good. Yeah. And sometimes the greater good is accomplished and sometimes it's not. I remember nine out of every 10 problems in the world revolve around money. So, and men are easily corrupted. Anyway, sorry, that's my long-winded answer oh, to well, that. So, thank, well, really interesting. And so thank you for that. And 
I like a sort of STEM question from that is yeah. about the more broad flat earth community from your vantage point. What kind of, I'm going to use the word intersectionality, just meaning sort of camaraderie. Is there any sort of intersectionality or camaraderie between sort of the flat earth community and the anti-vax community or whatever other sort of prominent um, yes. theory? Yes, so, there, there is. So um, they're all, most of your other conspiracies will dovetail inside flat earth so there's not a lot of rivalry we don't get into big arguments between flat earth and anti-vax or flat earth and and 9-11 or flat earth and i don't know, even sandy hook um mostly because we can claim okay one our conspiracy is way bigger than yours so if you want and and we do every once in a while we will get into arguments like a 9-11 people uh more often than most because they'll say well 9-11 is the biggest conspiracy out there and they, they want to take pride in that. It's like, oh, yeah, that's the biggest conspiracy. It's like, no, 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 it's not. It's not even close. Um, but like with anti-vaxxers, for example, if there's very few people in the flat earth community that also don't believe in most of the other conspiracies, because if you can get your head around flat earth, everything else opens up. Uh, the example would be in the clues where I said that, I, that I'm not kidding when I say this. I know people that absolutely will swear that the British family are made up of lizards. And yet when I go to them and say, oh, yeah, by the way, flat earth, come get the hell out of here. You know, they, they, they literally will laugh me out of the room. I'm going, really? Because you just told these, me that everyone over there is a, is a salamander. And, yeah, yeah. and yet you, you think flat earth is crazy. So once you're into flat earth, everything else opens up. And there's only a couple conspiracies that don't dub a tail in. Um, the most notable would be, uh, you probably haven't heard of it, or maybe you have, uh, the secret space program, which is that there was a military space program that ran parallel to the civilian space program that was way bigger and way more advanced. They've talked about it in comic books and graphic novels. It's like, yeah, that's fine and all, but NASA is a military organization, so you're talking about military versus military, uh, not buying it. So, and they say that like 3 million people are living on the moon and there's hundreds of thousands of people living on Mars already. That can't dovetail, that cannot work simultaneously with flat earth because flat earth says there's no space. You're living in a building. So there's no moon to land on. There's no Mars to land on. So whatever you're talking about, is fine. Everything else though, yeah, is, is on the same uh, page. And there is no, I have yet to see uh, people really, really argue like, like, what what would be the conflict like anti-vaxxers for example there, there's no reason to argue with flat earthers mm -hmm. uh, because what, what are you arguing about exactly it's like we we if we're on your if we it's like oh yeah i totally believe in you know we're on the same page with you and you're on the same page with us it's a one-sided deal so we don't care most of the time yeah. it's like yeah yeah whatever we agree with you get away <laughs> and so i i jumping back a little bit um do you do you see any sort of common traits among flat earthers as sort of people you meet? Like, I, 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 another question I have for you is, as the sort of conspiracy has become more mainstream, right. has your role in it changed from sort of sitting behind a desk making content to dispense to the larger community to more sort of in-the-flesh uh, yeah. interactions with the community? And then what sort of... When you meet like your other everyday flat earthers, are there common strands among everyone that you can sort of tease out and see? Not as many. You know, it, it's that's a good question because of that the answer really surprised most of mainstream media, which is when you go to these conferences or go to the meetups, people just look like anybody else, which is why they kind of joked about in the documentary, flat earthers could be walking among you. Oh, yeah, there's absolutely they're walking. You, in fact, you probably know flat earthers right now. I'm not kidding you because 90% of our members don't go to meetups. They don't make content. They don't, they don't go to conferences. They just are super quiet about it. And they, but they write me on an hourly basis saying, I'm worried about friends, families, co uh, family, uh, coworkers. They're, they're worried about all these things. Uh, even within my own family, they're, they're mm -hmm. members. Like I've got cousins that are absolutely into it. Will not come out. Uh, I have talked to other celebrities. Big ones, bigger than what has has come out so far, and they've said, "Oh yeah, yeah, not not coming out until it's safer to come out because we saw what happened to Kyrie Irving." Yeah, and it's like, yeah. all right, yeah. And Kyrie Irving, look, I even I don't blame him for for doing what he did. 
he was on an emotional high. He had won his championship. LeBron James is one of his best friends. He's 25, got his ring. You know, what? what's he got to lose, right? Yeah, yeah. well, except that he forgot that journalists are have access to the locker room after every freaking game. And now that's in their back pocket at all times. It's like, you didn't have a good game? Fine, let's talk about Flat Earth. They will bring that. That will haunt him. For as long as this, you know, as long as it stays, uh, it, until it, it's completely blown up. And remember, he came out, um, funny enough, he came out about a month before we even started shooting that documentary. So he didn't even know. I, I wonder, well, what else? So, sorry. The no, yeah. short, 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 short answer. They look like everybody. They don't look like anything special. They are not uh, Ted Kaczynski, Unabomber type people. You wouldn't look that. I mean, if you put them in a police lineup, they're not going to stick out. You, you you don't walk around the conference going, oh, man, that's a weird looking dude. Oh, those people look shifty. They're all really happy and really enthusiastic, and they come from everywhere. And, yeah. and again, there's more women in Flat Earth than there is just about every conspiracy because it's got that happy, positive side to it. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I we've covered just about everything I've – uh, sort of written out for question wise, but uh, one question that I'm sort of just thinking about: sure. um, What are your political views, and do do your politics sort of intersect with your involvement in flat Earth, or for you personally, and as you see the community more broadly? Um, okay, is the community more uh, Republican than Democrat? Okay. okay, so well, let's let's go with the community first because I'm a little different. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the community is more Republican than Democrat. For whatever reason, I'm I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I mean, I I only know this because I hear the word Trump being thrown out there quite a bit. When we first started this, of course, he wasn't even president. Uh, but so, but even back then, we didn't. It it's not really talked about much. But yes, uh, so the short short answer to that, yes, it is. It does skew more Republican. I don't okay. know why. Maybe it's because. Okay, I can tell you why. Actually, there's a good reason for that. And that is Republicans are generally pro-gun, pro-firearm. Mm -hmm. And anyone that's into pro-firearms is knows more conspiracies than the other side, the, yeah. the liberal the liberal side. Because if you if you think so, because every every gun owner has thought or heard at one point, dude, they're coming to take your guns. There's there's like 10 different conspiracies about there about how they're going to come take your guns most of which i think are just to fuel the gun buying market <laughs> because every time somebody said i mean seriously the second obama was elected it's like gun sales went through the freaking roof and nobody took away anybody's guns uh which is a whole nother conspiracy because the truth is the manufacturers have such a powerful lobby right now that no one that, that no one's going to make any headway in congress because you're talking about companies that are older than than Oh my God! Than the government in some cases. Oh yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. I mean, old old companies. Um, myself though, I have never voted for mm -hmm. anything uh, along those lines, but for a different reason, and that is I believe in the rules of power, which mm -hmm. are you can look up some. I mean, they vary from website to website, but some of the and that is if the ultimate rule of power is stay hidden. Which means if you are, it's, it's kind of the blessing and the curse of being the ult ultimate power. And it's like, well, you know, the richest person in the world, like richest person in the world here. It's like, no, no, that's the publicly rich. There are people out there that are so powerful that you will never hear of them. And the, the reason is that the rule of being hidden is never put yourself in a position that you can be overthrown. And that is the ultimate safety net. And that is if there is some revolt in your country, some society upheaval, well, they can't target you if they don't know who you are. So what you do is you elect you. Now you are the puppet master. You can control and you donate. And so, sorry, the, the longer answer is this, uh, why I don't vote. Um, think of it this way. Let's say, or no, I'll even give it to you. You're a billionaire, right? You, you just all of a sudden started up this tech company a few years ago. Now you're a billionaire and you want to donate money to a political party, Democrats or the Republicans, right? Which one do you pick? And then you get into this big thought experiment. It's like, well, my views on this, you know, lean liberal and my other views, they lean Republican. I don't know. What do I do? And then you realize that what the answer is, and that is no, you just donate a whole bunch of money to both parties simultaneously. Because people forget is that the parties themselves don't care. 
they, they don't care about your allegiance. All they care about is your money. They don't care if you gave the other side a million dollars as long as they got a million dollars. In fact, if you give them enough money, not only do you, do you get your picture taken with them that you can put on your mantle, you with George Bush or whoever it is, but you can also uh, influence policy so, to a certain degree. And then you're saying, okay, Mark, what's your point? Why don't you vote? I go, my point is, it took you a billionaire to do, to do that, to influence policy, to actually make a difference. And this is not to make you sad or anything. It's like, well, what yeah, is I, your individual vote doing? It's just a person on the street, John, Johnny Lunchbox. Probably nothing. But it's the illusion, not to steal from The Simpsons, uh, the Kang and Kodos episode from years ago, but that is, uh, it's the illusion of choice. And that is as long as people are given the illusion that they're making a difference or their their vote is like, you know, it, it lets you sleep better. Great. Fantastic. That's all they care about. Overall, the policies are not going to change based on your thing. And I realized that as I was going through life, the, the more I didn't vote, actually, the, the happier I was. It's like, you know what? They're going to do what they're going to do. And society is going to roll as it's supposed to. And we'll we'll get there one way or the other so yeah. that's my take so everybody yeah a lot of a lot of republicans in the flat earth but i'm neither yeah yeah well so i guess my last sort of question is mm -hmm. um i i forget who said it but they they were saying there are no knowns known unknowns and unknown unknowns mm -hmm. and i was wondering is there a piece of sort of evidence that would change you from being a flat earther to someone who subscribes to the idea that the earth is round i is there like would is that a known unknown for sure you? sure sure uh two things first off we don't even i know this sounds petty we don't even use the word round if you're in the flat earth that's by the way it's one of the giveaways uh if if you're in flat earth you don't even use the word round because uh a dinner plate is round your dining room table is round round can be a two-dimensional object uh sphere globe ball is what we use uh, in fact okay. not to use not to go on the biblical side but it's really interesting because there's a lot you didn't ask this question and it's fine but there at least half of our community at least in the united states are hardcore christians Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because when they started looking at the Bible, for whatever reason, they determined that there was a flat earth book. And I, I did not push them in this direction at all. In fact, they went through it with a fine tooth comb and there was only, this, you'll wonder why I'm talking about this. There was one verse in it, only one verse that even hinted about the globe. And that was Isaiah 40, 22, which says, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And well, the ancient Hebrew is circle is circle. A circle is not ball or globe or sphere. And yet they're holding on to this with their fingernails, like grim death, trying like hold on to it. It's like, okay, this like this one verse has veto power over everything else, over everything else in the Bible. Yeah. To your point, which is, uh, is there anything that can convince me to, to turn me into a globalist again? Oh, yeah, there's a couple things that, that could do it. Um, there's a there's an, an expensive option that would be really, really tough to do because it's never been done in the history of space travel. And I don't think it's going to, which is put a 4K camera because they're cheap nowadays. You can get them with a box of cereal. Uh, put a 4K camera on the top of a rocket that's going to leave Earth orbit. You turn it on. You, th you transmit the feed. You don't hit edit and you let us have the unblemished copy of it because... Mm -hmm. To date, and you'd think it would have happened at least once, nobody has taken a rocket with that sort of camera and, you know, to the Earth, you know, the, the launch pad disappears below and then the curvature starts formula forming, then there's the ball, and then it's gone. The yeah. closest anyone ever got was the Elon Musk Roadster in space. But it was edited so heavily that all of a sudden, I mean, they kept following the boosters all the way back down to Kennedy, which is, by the way, an engineering impossibility, but we won't get into that too much. It was like rockets landing, rockets landing, rockets landing, and car. And there it was. The car was in space already. And it's like, okay, where's where's the booster tumbling away from it? Where's how? Where did this shot come from to where I even said... Uh, when somebody sent me the, the still shot of it and I, and I looked, I go, oh, who did this Jaredism? I go, who, who made this thing? Right. And they, and they go, no, dude, that's a live feed. I'm going, I, I had literally started to develop like a facial tick, like going, what? what? It can't be a live feed. It's impossible. How, how is that in? And, and it was terrible. I won't get into it too much. The 4k camera would be, would be a really great thing because we could analyze it and, but it's never, ever going to happen. They're, they're never going to, oh, hang on. Ignore people. So I don't have anything else scheduled, do I? No. So um, 
Uh, the, but I came up with something that was even easier because people are saying, and seriously, I've been thinking about this for a long, long time. It's like, well, yeah. you should send Mark to space or you should send this, this and oh, go to Antarctica and, and do all this other stuff. I'm going, no, 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 there's an easier way to do this. And I even made a clue about it called the lost nail, which goes into, I don't, I don't know if you saw it, but it goes into the space suit, which is, uh, how does an astronaut suit protect against the vacuum of space? Law of thermodynamics, uh, pressure needs a container. If you have a can of hairspray, that's pressurized, right? It's a hard container. And if you have a soft container, like a basketball, it goes rigid almost immediately. You gotta think of it like a basketball, you can't burst it with your hands. And we're talking about just a small difference of pressure between what's outside it and what's inside it. And mm -hmm. if you put that basketball in a vacuum chamber, it would just blow up and, bl and explode. So why don't the spacesuits do that? ever mm -hmm. they don't act like they're in a vacuum chamber in fact it was really interesting uh sorry i gotta rant for a minute which is oh, when 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 you looked at the space suit technology when they nasa was first developing it they were using they knew the problem of pressure and vacuum it was brilliant which was they, they were working with plastics and metals it looked like a b movie i mean you watch the the early nasa stuff they're trying to walk around these metal things on the in the desert and it looked horrible and then all of a sudden somebody had this brilliant idea and I will say, whoever came up with this, kudos, probably not even alive anymore, which is, they said, you know what? Let's just do a soft suit. Nobody knows anything about physics. I mean, nobody knows anything about physics. We'll shoot it on the moon. People won't even question it. Seriously, it'll work. It'll totally work. And, and, and we, can, we'll, we can do this. And they did. And it was flawless. Uh, meaning people on the street they don't know what the how the suit is supposed to react it's like no it should have the people sh guys should have turned into a parade float it would have been like uh the christmas story uh that movie remember the kid put all his remember the christmas story where the kid's putting all the jackets like, can't put my arms down it would have been just like that except you couldn't move anywhere and you would be exhausted trying to bend anything not to mention your fingers how are they hooking up electronics they might as well have been wearing oven mitts and mm -hmm. so none of this stuff, none of this stuff happened. Oh, so what's my point? My point is my challenge that I put out there and I said, okay, you want to put you, this will go a long way in the community. Get me a freaking spacesuit, self-contained, none of that tethered G4 suit that's used for fighter pilots. Give me, you know, I mean, remember we've had these suits around since the late sixties. I right? should, mm -hmm. should have a bunch of these. I want to know what magic technology is in that backpack. I don't care about the heating and cooling or oxygen or humidity levels. Tell me what magic technology is in that backpack with battery powered technology from the sixties that can stop the vacuum of space and keep everybody running around fine. Put me seriously, grab me, get, take me one of those suits, put me in a vacuum chamber, crank the switch. Tell me how I still stay alive. And it is so easy to test. It is so easy to test. If you say, well, if they put you in a vacuum chamber, how do you know you're in a vacuum chamber, right? They could just make it a partial vacuum. I'm going, no, 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 it's easy because you can bring in three things with you. One would be uh, just a, a, a little balloon that's like, like a breath of air in it because that would just expand to no, no end. Two would be uh, a bottle of water or just a cup of water because water boils at room temperature in a vacuum instantly. Mm -hmm. And the third one would be a bell because a bell can't make any noise in a vacuum. Can't. Yeah. And between those three things. So, all right. Sorry. Long story short. The reason why I would do this test is if the suit cannot work the way it's told, if the suit cannot work the way it's advertised, then anything that ever showed that suit is a lie. Mm -hmm. including Gemini and Mercury and Apollo and the space shuttles program, which most people don't even know. We don't even have, we haven't had a space shuttle program for years. Nobody knows that. Uh, the, and of course the ISS and everything that was done on the, on the exterior of the ISS. So that would go a long way. So yeah, it's, it's a fairly okay. cheap experiment, but somebody has got to give it up. And to date, no one's approached me. I mean, they could shut this thing down in two seconds if they wanted to. Put me in a vacuum chamber and Mark, no, oh, Mark, you'll die in a vacuum chamber. It's like, yeah, even better. If I die in the chamber, I win. If I live yeah. in the chamber, I lose. So mm -hmm. why not? It, well, it'd be worth it to him. Yeah. Well, Mark, I really appreciate your time. So thank you so much for chatting oh, today. thank you. Um, and I, uh, just as a last sort of thing, um, I think I'm going to reach out to, um, I, I think her name's Patricia Steele. Steer. Uh, it should it should have been Steele. A better name is but Patricia Steele. Absolutely. Uh, do you, do you know how to get a hold of her? I I have an email address. Um, Miss Steer at gmail.com? Uh, Miss Steer. Yeah, that's the one that they have. It, 
I think I might reach out to her in the next couple days and try and do a similar thing. Do you think she'd be okay with that? Yep, yep. As a matter of fact, I will send the audio recording of this to her so that she can listen. But yeah, yeah, email, email her as soon as possible, and she will, uh, she will absolutely get a hold of you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and is there anyone else who you think would be worthwhile to chat with? Oh, yeah. Uh, take your pick. Uh, really good one. If you're going to interview Patricia, that would be uh, DITRH. Uh, the channel, D- otherwise known as uh, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Mm-hmm. I could for, in fact, I'll forward um, uh, your information to to him if you want. If, I, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, and, he's uh, really good about. It. He's he's got some wonderful explanations, and he could recommend people. I and mean, there's all sorts of people awesome. that you could talk to, but he would be a great one to talk to. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Happy to do it. Thanks, man. Great. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.